Hello everyone, we would like to introduce the Chart Guys newest course, Essential Candlesticks and the patterns that they create. This is something that I, nine years into my trading journey, take for granted. I look at a chart and I can instantly subconsciously know what the candlestick shapes are telling me, the patterns that they are creating, and the market psychology that's going on behind the scenes to create those candlestick shapes. Obviously, I had to learn this at some point, and it was literally step number one of my technical analysis education journey was understanding what these candlestick shapes are telling us. So after going through this 12-hour course, you'll be able to understand why candlesticks are essential for trading success, develop your own ability to observe and react to the market trends and changes, develop an understanding of market psychology and how this phenomenon influences price action as well as a whole bunch more. I'm going to link this website in the description of this video so you can check out more information for yourself. We've got examples of the modules and we break down exactly how this course is compiled and essentially what it is is a big chunk of book learning. So it's going to break down what these patterns are telling us, two candlestick bullish patterns, three candlestick bullish patterns, two candlestick bearish patterns, so on and so forth. Some live examples of those patterns playing out and then tying it all together as to how we can use understanding these patterns to benefit our trading. My partner, Chart Guys Jason, goes through the meat of this course, breaking down all these individual patterns. I personally chime in with more abstract psychological topics of discussion, the art of observation, the psychology of a candle, and things of that nature. But we look forward to you checking this course out, and we appreciate your support as always. Have a great rest of your day. Hey, MJ friends, we're going to look at the Canadian MJ names in this video. We'll do the USMJ names in the video tomorrow. Going to certainly cover a whole bunch of them. So over the past week, I have been Bulls in Full Control Dan, and I am now going to shift to Caution Dan because... We are very overextended, and anybody that's been trading for multiple years and has watched euphoric cycles go through, they know that we are certainly entering euphoria mode in this sector. And we can play the little game. You know you're in euphoria when YOLO gets awarded the ticker POT, and they go well over 100% on the day. So you change your ticker 145% from the close of the previous day that has nothing to do with market cap it has nothing to do with anything it has to do with the ticker changing so bottom line is that's absurd but that's the kind of thing you see in a euphoric market when crypto was going insane anything that had crypto attached to it was worth money we saw penny stocks changing their name to put blockchain in their name and running hundreds of percent so bottom line is we have euphoria underway right now we're seeing it in the massive moves from APHA and Cron. And this does not mean sell. This means, as we always stress with the chart guys, have a game plan. Have levels where if X happens, I will Y. That takes the thought out of it. That takes the emotion out of it. If $19 is hit, I will sell. If $25 is hit, I will sell. Otherwise, you have to mentally prepare yourself to potentially sit through 10, 20% of a pullback. And if you're willing to do that and you're looking long term, that's perfectly fine. But that's your game plan. That's laid out in advance. You're not making decisions on the fly. So ideally, if you are looking to lock in profit on this massive move and have shares, or I should say have capital to buy into consolidation, you want to be either walking up a stop loss or selling into strength. Again, everybody's going to have a different scenario financially, a different scenario with their portfolios. The only thing that I want to stress here is have a game plan, stick to that game plan, and prepare yourself for the potential of a 20 cent pullback or a 20% pullback on any of these tickers on the weekly time frame sometime in the next month. So if you're willing to sit through that, that's perfectly fine, but mentally prepare yourself for that. So, YOLO to pot. So we'll start it off with CGC and the major five names here, and we'll start with the daily time frame. So we got the bull break to start the day, and we had that momentum from yesterday after hours. We pulled back from that. We broke resistance first thing this morning. Had a decent little start to the day, but we couldn't break over resistance of $51. So we have a little bit different of a setup here. And, you know, oftentimes we see these blow-off tops that I was talking about where we get that 180 reversal and that quick pullback. We got a little bit of that, a taste of that three days ago, but it remained healthy. It remained you know, as no major red flags, just a healthy pullback, no follow through for the bears. 
but with what the current setup is on this chart, CGC is not set up for a blow off top. We've been trading sideways for the last five days. In my opinion, Kron is going to be the most visibly easy to see the top because it is that overextended. So in my opinion, the two things that I'm going to be watching for to indicate when sector wide more significant consolidation is coming is number one, the S&P 500. As always, we're not seeing the tick for tick correlation with the S&P 500 in terms of the five minute time frame, but the sentiment is still having an effect in my opinion. You can see it when SPY hits a new low of the day. We see a little bit of a drop across the sector, but so I'm watching SPY and I'm watching Cron. And I do believe that Cron topping out at the temporary all time high and pulling back on the daily is going to be an indication that the sector is starting to pull back as well. So at this point in time, the bulls are still in full control. So I don't want to give any indication that obviously there's some individual names where that's not the case, but for the vast majority of everybody, the bulls held on really well today. There wasn't any kind of major profit taking. We did close at the low of the day for CGC. So that could indicate further pullback is coming early next week. But again, there's no red flags at this point in time, even on the daily chart. Keep in mind, one more thing I want to point out is even if we do pull back 20%, 20% pullback on the vast majority of these weekly charts is still going to be very healthy to form a higher low and establish a new support level. We had Citron come out today. Citron came out and said, we're selling our APHA position because they're recognizing things are running way too fast, way too hard, and they know that we're going to pull back soon. And they also said they are shorting Cron. So Citron is looking to short into extreme strength. And I think they're going to do a good job with timing. Maybe they don't nail the top. Maybe Cron gets another day or two of green. But with a short over 21 on Cron in the U.S., you're pretty comfortable overall. So for CGC here, on the four-hour time frame, we have an equilibrium forming. We got our high of 51. Our low of the pullback is 46.13. Looks like our lower high was set today at 50.49. And then on Monday, we're going to watch for the bulls to try and form a higher low compared to 46.13. So we have a nice tightening pattern to be watching the hourly time frame, a little bit less clear. These, you know, these, this equilibrium mixed in the middle might confuse some people, but I think the four hour time frame has the most clarity. And with extended hours off, it's a little bit more clear. So keeping an eye out for a higher low compared to 4613. And if 4613 breaks, it's a lower high and lower low. And we zoom out to the daily to look for the clear daily consolidation to try and form a new support level. So it's all about 46.13 on CGC early next week and key resistance at 51. So Cron Bulls out in full force yet again today, getting that follow through. But we did get some profit taking by the end of the day. So here's the daily chart where we have our big upper wick. Look at the volume climax. We are probably not going to see more volume than that next week. So that's a potential volume climax to be watching for. All time high was 20.35. We ran up to 21. 79 well over five percent above that all-time high huge follow-through but first thing i do when i see this kind of candlestick at the top of an uptrend it is a shooting star candlestick i want to see have we lost the hourly uptrend and the answer is no so we've got our high of 2179 resistance we've got our low of consolidation at this point from that high i'm looking down at 2048 as the most important support level short term if we break 2048, that's when we zoom out on the daily and say, all right, daily consolidation is underway. Our last higher low was 1409 forever ago. So we're going to look for a daily higher low to form if we break that support level. 2010 is also key. So 2048, and then the bears would need to follow through and break 2010 as well. Watching for the potential of the volume climax to have formed today. APHA, that strength stood out two days ago. That strength stood out yesterday. And the strength stands out today. Again, same thing, volume, potential volume climax, highest volume that we've seen in over a month. We're watching the hourly uptrend still intact at this point. That's still healthy consolidation. So we're watching to see what if we lose this support level 1225 on Monday, we zoom out and we look for consolidation to form a healthy daily higher low. We are pretty extended. The last daily higher low that formed was 907. And here we are hitting $13. So a 40% move without daily consolidation. The four-hour RSI was through the roof, started consolidating into the end of the day today. Again, it's a question of, can the bulls show up Monday morning and break 1308 for continuation? Do we fail under 1308 and come down and break support of 1241, indicating 
further consolidation on the daily time frame is coming. ACB on the daily chart. Charts slow to load today. So ACB, we set the criteria two days ago. If the inside bar breaks bullish, we're not, we have not set our lower high clearly yet. If it breaks bearish, then we have, referring to 734. Bulls broke 734. We finally see some solid volume. Closed pretty strong as well. All about 752. 2% move to break resistance needed on Monday. Hourly higher low to try and keep the bulls in control is 730. If Monday we break 730, the odds that we're going to form a daily lower high compared to 752 and have to consolidate on the daily will increase. If the bulls can hold 730 on Monday, they keep full control and we test 752 as key resistance. So a nice bounce from the bulls right up at this resistance level. First thing next week, that's what we're going to be watching for. TLRY bulls also saw a little bit of follow through today. Nothing huge, but we did break the top of the move of 8340. Couldn't close over that level. So again, not extremely impressive for the bulls today. And the hourly higher low to keep the bulls in full control is 8131, followed by 8007. Resistance is 8340. And the next level after that is 86.43. So bulls still in control there as well. Watching for a loss of the hourly uptrend to indicate a daily lower high has been established. HEXO. So now on to our tier two names. So HEXO on the daily time frame. Got a bull break of 760, but no follow through behind it. Bulls were a bit overextended. We got up to 773 and then pulled back and closed at the low of the day. So my first question is, are we holding the hourly uptrend? And the answer is yes, because we had not established an hourly support at any point on the way up. Anything above 689 is a higher low. So bulls have a ton of space to work with. Inside bar, inside bar, bear break on the hourly was an indication that consolidation was coming. And it was a little 15 minute equilibrium that broke bearish. And we closed near the low of the day. So if we see a break of 740 on Monday... We're going to pull back and look for a daily higher low to form compared to 651 support, our recent daily higher low. So not the kind of bull break and follow through that you want to see. And we'll see if that close at the low of the day indicates some more profit taking coming on Monday. OGI, lead bull in the MJ sector as it continues its run after earnings have come out. Higher lows and higher highs each day, keeping the uptrend intact very clearly. Got just under $8 psychological resistance today. Trying to form an hourly bull flag at the end of the day. Support is $7.76. Ideal for the bulls to hold first thing Monday. $7.97. $8. And then $8.55. All time high are our only resistance levels nearby. And bulls are extremely strong. Hourly uptrend is the most important short term. If we lose the hourly uptrend, we look for healthy daily consolidation. Because anything above $5.87 is a higher low. TRST. Haven't looked at the chart yet, so I can't preload my comments. TRST on the daily chart also got continuation first thing, but pulled back and closed near the low of the day. So we're seeing some profit taking in these tier two names that we weren't necessarily seeing in some of these names. So we're getting a good mix. CGC closed at the low of the day, Hexo at the low of the day, TRST at the low of the day. So some names giving some initial signs of consolidation. Hourly uptrend clearly lost. 985 was a higher low this morning. The bulls attempted to see continuation. They rejected at 1009, a lower high. And then the break of 985 lost the hourly uptrend. Lose the hourly uptrend. We zoom out to the daily and watch for daily consolidation. Anything above 855 is a higher low, keeping the daily uptrend intact. Also a lot of volume here, marking a potential temporary climax. Look at the last couple volume climaxes that we have had on this run. Volume climax indicates consolidation and sideways trading for four days volume climax indicates a two-day pullback and here's another little volume climax we'll see if it indicates a couple days of pullback t god daily higher low established and the shift in momentum was on and it was marked by volume first thing so we have more volume than the previous two days of pullback and looked at t god a half an hour into the trading day today and we had half of yesterday's volume in the first half hour that tells you you're going to have more volume today than yesterday, which is exactly what the bulls want to see when they are trying to attempt to form this daily higher low. That shows the last surge of bear volume 
as the bull volume is starting to surge to buy that dip. And when you have both bear and bull high volume at the same time, it's when the scales shift. Think about supply and demand. There is more supply of shares than there is demand for three days as we pull back. As the volume drops, that supply of shares is starting to drop off. Now demand starts to creep up. And that's the bull pressure. The bulls buying is the demand side of things as the supply is dwindling because people that were going to sell have sold in the last three days. And that's when the scales flip and you form your high or low and the bulls show up. So the hourly momentum shifted with our 344 level, tried to hold that support, just barely broke below it. And then a significant hourly green candle. Bulls want to hold 359 on Monday and break 380 to show some convincing follow through and you have to be aware of timing. So we're not in a vacuum here where every individual name is doing its own thing. There are individual names doing their own thing, but everybody's going to be affected by what the sector is doing, and the sector is going to be affected by what the S&P 500 is doing. So if the sector gets its signs of consolidation, if Cron clearly starts pulling back from the all-time high, and the names that closed at the low of the day are going to follow through, CGC, Hexo, then this is going to be a bit of a fake-out signal if that does play out. So keep in mind that, you know, had this happened two days ago, the bulls would have a much better environment than if we start consolidating Monday, Tuesday, because we could easily just see a quick little bounce attempt, wrong timing for the sector beginning to consolidate, and we head back down to test the low of 342. So just be aware that the overall sector obviously has a significant impact as well. N on the daily time frame has yet to be able to shift that momentum. We continue to consolidate and we continue to approach key support must hold 131. We did hold 136 as a double bottom, but it's still a clear lower high pattern every day for the last four days. So multiple, or I should say just one inside bar now, 136, bulls really want that level to hold, have to break 142 on Monday to clearly shift that momentum. And we can say, all right, 136 is our new higher low. And then we would look for potentially a lower high compared to 149, 159. But we have to break 142. If we don't break that level Monday, bulls don't prove a thing. VFF, continuation from the bull flag, perfection bull flag. I would put that in a textbook if I had a textbook to make. Increasing bull volume, declining bear volume into the bull flag. Daily inside bar with the double top breaks bullish. Big time follow through. And we are now looking at the next resistance level after 762, the high of the day. We're looking at 772 and 780. Hourly uptrend is the most important thing to be watching here. Anything above 729 keeps the hourly uptrend intact. Lose the hourly uptrend. We zoom out to the daily and look for daily consolidation for a higher low above 638. Fire getting some headlines, or I should say some attention. With the daily inside bar, huge bull break yesterday. Big time follow through today on the gap up open. Hourly uptrend is the most important for the bulls to maintain to keep full control. The last hourly higher low established by fire was at. The last hourly higher low on fire established is down here at 221, 222. We'll take the lower level there. So if we break 221, we're going to look for the potential of daily consolidation. Resistance is the high of the day, 229. Next level after that, we're looking up at 230 and 243. 243 is a very important long-term level, so keep an eye on that. A bit extended, especially with the gap up, so keep an eye on the hourly uptrend. Hourly uptrend is the bull's best friend. If, you have, if you're in a stock and it's very overextended, but you have the hourly uptrend in your favor, it's very confidence building. If you lose that hourly uptrend, then the question is, all right, how much consolidation are we going to see? How much pullback are we going to see on the daily time frame? So that's why I keep stressing the hourly so much. NRTH, key resistance is 74. And we topped out yesterday at 73. After 74, we're looking at 75 and then 82. Daily inside bar today, 65 is short-term support. So have to break 74 on Monday for the Bulls to get some convincing follow through. Did close at the high of the day, but 74 and 75 resistance is looming. Weekly shifting that trend. You can see why 74 is so key here for the Bulls to attempt to get over. So that's where we stand for the Canadian MJ sector. Again, the Bulls are in full control. We did see profit taking in some names today. We did see a close at the low of the day. There wasn't massive selling pressure. There wasn't significant bear volume. 
which is what I look for to be a clear indication saying, all right, tops are in. And I don't have that yet in terms of confidence that the top is in yet. I know it's very likely coming soon, which is why my mode has switched from bulls in full control to caution mode for next week. And when we do start to consolidate on these daily timeframes, the amount of volume behind that consolidation is going to be very telling for us to say, again, is this just fine? And, you know, bulls need to reset as we've done a couple times on this bull run the last month, or is this more significant and the bear volume is giving us red flags? So that's something we're going to keep an eye out for as well. Congrats to the bulls with all your gains on all these tickers over the last week or two. I hope you have a good weekend. We'll check in for the USMJ video tomorrow, and I'll leave you with some Iceland. Thanks for tuning in.